Good morning, grade 3 students. I am Miss Alice. Today, Wednesday, April 22, 2020. Chapter 5, Ecosystems. Lesson 4, What can we learn from fossils? Objectives for today. Analyze and interpret data from fossils and will communicate how fossils are used to learn about the past. Identify a fossil. Before we start our lesson, please open your science books at pages 214 to 115 to correct our homework. Question number five. Draw an X on the consumer in this food web that is an Omnivore. What is the meaning of the word omnivore? Animals that eat both plants and animals, we call them omnivore. You should put an X on the mouse. The mouse eats grass and grasshopper. Question number six. List the consumers in this food web that eat prairie dogs. Or in other words, name the animals that eat the prairie dog. Golden eagle, black-footed furt, coyote. Question number seven. Underline two effects in that text. That may result if the number of prairie dogs is reduced. Let's read together the text. Changes in food webs. All of the living things in a food web are connected. If one part of a food web is removed or changed, other parts change. For example, prairie dogs build colonies on the grassy plains but people also settle on these plains. This reduces the habit for prairie dogs. Their numbers may decrease. With fewer prairie dogs to eat, black-footed furts may not have the food they need. The furts may die out. This change can affect the Badgers who eat furts. Badgers may have to look for other food. So you're going to underline the furts may die out. Badgers may have to look for other food. Question number eight. How are food chains and food webs alike and different? Both show how energy is transferred from one living thing to another. A food web is made up of many related food chains. Question number nine. Think about what you learned about food chains and food webs. How do living things interact? Living things depend on each other to get the energy they need to live. Look at the pictures in front of you. What are these? They are fossils. Very good. Describe each picture. The first picture is a plant fossil. Excellent. The second picture is a dinosaur fossil. Good job! The third picture is a fish fossil. Excellent! Open your science books at pages 224-225. Lesson 4. What can we learn from fossils? Look at the Envision It at the top of the page. Read the question. Tell what do you think this dinosaur ate? Explain. 
Take two minutes to think about this question. You should answer me. It ate plants. It does not have the long, sharp teeth needed to eat meat. Look at the top of the page 225. I will know the characteristics of fossils. I will know how fossils are used to learn about the past. I should learn the following two words. Extinct, fossil. Look at the text in front of you. What is the heading here? Fossils. We have two important words. What they are? Extinct. Fossil. Very good. Let's read together the text in front of us. Many kinds of plants and animals that lived long ago are no longer living on Earth. They are extinct. How do scientists learn about plants and animals from the past? One way is to study fossils. A fossil is the remains or mark of a living thing from long ago. Fossils are often found in sedimentary rock. The pictures show one way that fossils form. Sediments cover the remains of an animal. The sediments then turn to rock over time. As the animal's body wears away, it leaves a mold in the rock in the shape of the animal's parts. Fossils form in other ways too. Some are actual parts of living things, such as bones. Sometimes an animal's whole body becomes a fossil. For example, Scientists have found the bodies of insects in hardened tree sap. Signs of living things such as preserved footprints are a type of fossil too. I am so excited! We are going to meet lots of dinosaurs today! We are not going to meet the dinosaurs, but to see the dinosaurs. But I thought the dinosaurs were alive, like in the movie Jurassic Park. I am sorry, but that's not true. about dinosaurs? The paleontologist. Did they use time machine to go back in time and see dinosaurs? <laughs> Not really. Nature has a way of preserving history in the form of fossils. Fossils? Hmm. Before I tell you about fossils, can you answer some of my questions? Yes, sure. What happens when a plant or an animal dies? They are destroyed when they decay or when another animal eats it. Yes, that's true for most plants and animals. I know that. But sometimes the animal is buried before it can be destroyed and after millions of years it gets turned into a rock. So fossils are animals or plants turned into stones? Yes, in millions of years of time. So if I bury a dead insect in the ground, would it become a fossil? Hmm, that can happen. But remember, real fossils are millions of years old. So what happens in these millions of years that an animal turns into stone? 
Fossils can be formed in different ways. Different processes? Yes, sometimes a whole animal like the mammoth gets trapped in the ice and stays frozen for thousands of years and they are found after thousands of years not changed a bit. Wow, that is how they knew the mammoth of Ice Age movie existed. Hmm, yes. Other ways? Um, sometimes an insect gets stuck in the tree sap. The thick extract from the trees? Yes, and then the sap hardens into a thick, clear material called amber. And does the insect also stay unchanged for millions of years? Yes, by these two processes, the creature remains unchanged. But how are dinosaur fossils formed? I was coming to that part. Most dinosaur fossils are formed by mold and cast. Mold and cast? Yes, imagine a dinosaur has drowned in a river and its body sinks to the bottom of the river. So its flesh will either rot away or will be eaten by creatures of the river like fish. And eventually, only the bones are left. Mud and sand called sediments cover the skeleton over many years. And over many more years, more sediments would cover the skeleton. And then the floor of the river sinks under the weight of the sediment and as more time passes, lower layers are pressed into hard rocks. And thus, the skeleton is completely surrounded by compressed stone. Yes, you are right. Then, over other hundred years to come, the bones are washed away by tiny trickles of water called groundwater. Mm -hmm. Now, the washed away bones leave spaces in the exact shape of dinosaur skeleton. What are the spaces called? It is called natural mold. As in the mold in cast. Yes, now groundwater brings tiny pieces of rock into the mold. After millions of years, these tiny rock pieces fill the mold. And also, the rock is pressed further and further underground. And thus, over time, the entire skeleton becomes solid rock. Many years later, the rock surrounding the skeleton rises to the surface. When an earthquake occurs, uh, yes, or when mountains rise naturally. How do the paleontologists find the fossil? Slowly, rain and wind washes away the top rocks. But sometimes, paleontologists have to dig long time to find them. Wow, this is amazing. I want to become two things now. <laughs> what? Paleontologist after a few years and a fossil after millions of years. Oh, great. Come, let's finish the tour of the museum. With the help of the text in front of you at page 225 and the video that you watched, answer the following questions. Define extinct. Define a fossil. Fill the concept map. How fossils form. Question number one. Define extinct. Plants or animals that are no longer living on Earth are called extinct. For example, dinosaurs. Question number two. Define a fossil. A fossil is the remains or mark of a living thing from long ago. For example, a plant fossil. Question number three. Fill the concept map. How fossils form? Old bones or teeth. Very old shells. Shapes left in rocks. As you can see in front of you, fossils are found in sedimentary rock. Here you can see a lizard dies and is covered by mud. Later on, after many years, the mud becomes rock. The mold of the lizard is a fossil. Homework question number one. 
Tell if the fossil in the bottom picture is the actual remains of a lizard. Explain how you know. Have a nice day.